Hey, hey, what's going on, you crispy coconuts? Today we're going to go over the progressions and specific drills I believe are important for teaching the Uchenko vault. We're going to look at shaping exercises, tumble track stations, and learning how to spot the vault. We're also going to go over developing a strong tuck, pike, layout, and take a deep dive into twisting. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn on the notifications for more new videos. So to start with, we're going to look at the round off. Often time when a girl does a cartwheel step in, they'll bring their back foot behind their front foot, finishing with beam feet rather than their feet together and how you'd want to finish a round off, as well as hitting the springboard. These basic needle kick drills will help pull their back leg in, just focusing on the back leg, bringing up to their front foot, keeping it together as to how they're going to punch the board. At the start of practice, these girls will do 10 needle kicks. Then they'll move to hurdle up to a raised surface. Luckily we have a rod floor right here, but it could be a panel mat or an 8 inch mat. Afterwards they'll hurdle down the surface from their knees, which really shows their strength and quickness. This basic station will tell you a lot about their gymnastics and vault in general, with their explosiveness. These hip curls help the gymnast understand the correct shape to punch the board in the most efficient position. It's also great for spotting your toes. Next are some hurdle downs, focusing on rounding the upper back to pull your arm down, rather than reaching forward with your chest. We also add the single arm down too. These may as well be the golden ticket to our Willy Wonka's lunge and hurdle factory because these are just great. This bungee pullback drill helps the gymnast feel their hips tucked under in the correct shape while feeling their center of mass with resistance pull their weight backwards, just like they'd feel from a sprint. Here are some more drills that we do in our warm up. As these bungees are anchored down to the floor really efficiently, we can bang out 10 rocks back and forth. Then we move on and do five hurdles. Obviously we can lunge more, but it's the hurdle pulling the arms forward with the bungee. And then we'll do 10 arm slaps, followed by 10 shoulder shrugs. This drill is great for reaching back with the gymnast holding a weight, forcing the pull with gravity as your feet are raised and you're feeling somewhat weightless. These next set of drills are from Rachel Tracy at Cincinnati Gymnastics. She's a gem who I can go to to bounce ideas off. I think it's very important to have an open mind and be receptive to new innovations within the sport, communicating with other coaches and sharing your successes. So a big shout out to her for her cartwheel drills and the gymnast she produces. You'll see both of us work different drills and although some are similar in our warm up, you have to make what works best for you with your equipment, space and environment. Although many drills can be better than others, there's still no absolute cookie cutter strategy. When working with speed, the gymnast can get away with turning over their round off by somewhat gliding over the top, rather than pushing off their hands to pull their feet through. Nevertheless, don't judge a book by its cover. There's many factors that come into the Yuchenko, other than just technique. Okay, so saying straight. This is how I maintain the continuation of the straight direction. Power hurdle onto panel mats forces a straightness, and numerous repetitions will fix most issues. After that, we add the rounder from a run onto the panel mat. The stiff surface conditions the gymnast, so when they go to the springboard, it gives them that pop. Adding three long panel mats reinforces staying straight, plus it allows a great starting point for hurdling, roughly at 19 feet. The end goal will be hurdling behind 23 feet, or taller, or powerful gymnasts at 25 feet. Of course, everyone's different and it's not a one size fits all, but working with a large group of athletes, these set points for hurdling always allows a pretty good blueprint for everyone. The white line closest to the vault is at 23 feet and the second line is at 25 feet. So focusing on our last three steps, we work jump backs, progressing to back handspring forward to stomach, then back handspring snap through. Another great drill we implement is a three-step hurdle off a springboard into jump backs. This reinforces the last step hitting the springboard with the added power. Adding a soft mat over the table is a great way to avoid injury and fear while learning. Lowering the vault table one notch to where they compete at and adding a soft mat. This allows the gymnast to get comfortable entering into the table much more aggressively while also protecting their wrists and elbows. Then, take the mat away and raise the table up. Then they should really feel that block and sweet spot right on that money marker bravo. This is the extra guac that your vault needs. So some of the drills before we add the back handspring on the actual vault start here. Tart will step in and back handspring catch the handstand. From here we do a bunch of these punching drills. 
into the back handspring, catching the back handspring before 45 degrees, as well as snapping through in a straight body position. These next two are my favorite. They're like my Chick-fil-A sauce. They're perfect for the taste buds and perfect for replicating the entry. If we would like to get fancy, a good spotting station is doing a back handspring to horizontal against a wall or any table that you can find. Here we can spot by catching like a normal back handspring but assisting through the entry phase and block through the shoulders. If you need some sweet heat for your side stations, just add a panel mat, springboard, tea trainer, inflatable device, whatever you can to replicate the back handspring in the snap, preparing for the layout. Alrighty righty, now for the double layout, we teach hands out to the side, focusing solely on the hip lift to generate rotation, rather than pulling the hands down. Then when we add the hands down, it's going to give them that extra rotation and faster flip. I would literally tell them, how does a dog catch its tail? And then I'll tell them, catch your heels with your head. That's what they're going to be feeling as their hips are lifting. I will also tell them to count to three. You'll feel two hip lifts in the double layout, but I tell them to count to three to overemphasize it. Then we can have fun, drop the arm and twist, but that's going to be coming up later. These next series of drills help with the understanding of the hip lift within the double layout. These candle snaps are great, holding those hips and hamstrings tight. Arch backs have a small bounce to help with the initial extension. The bounce arch back to replicate the punch, then snap or extension back while whipping and driving hips up to the roof. You can also go bounce half or half on and a few other funky variations. These arch backs on the bozo ball with a slider under your heels are great to feel the hip lift and also squeezing your hamstrings. You can also do another variation where you start relaxed and then squeeze and drive your hips up and feeling your hips drive to the roof as you would in a double layout. So with entry blocking, this is all about entering and hitting the table, the handstand position before vertical. We really want to aim for that 45 degrees and then hopping off before handstand. As we do the forward roll or candle roll, we want to stand up straight away without an arm swing or hip movement. You'll see here, she'll move and swing her arms. A lot of these standing drills, they will use their arm swing to generate a little bit more power, but make sure you're cautious of their hips. Catching up against a wall or handstand is great to hit before vertical, as well as slapping the mat, which also helps with their chest lift into a layout. Straight jump back to a back handspring up to a cheese mat or block helps with the blind entry, as well as keeping your knees tight, reinforcing that tight punch. When they go forward to do the straight jump, try to make sure their arms are staying right by their ears. Doing numerous and numerous standard back handspring catch it up before 45, roll down. This is another bread and butter drill that you should be doing every day. You can also add a forward roll and again, try not to use the arm swing as that's what's replicating the round off in that same punch position. Adding this forward roll really is the icing on the cake. Alright, so here we're just shrugging it out, building that strength in that tight arch position. Arch hollows with the beams just above your knees are great for opening your shoulder angle and understanding the positions. And then you can scooch up to your hips and then start snapping through like you were on the resi and lifting your chest focusing on that layout position. Doing a standing back snap through on an air track really emphasizes and seems to show that it looks like the exact same position as what they do on the table. So look at this with swing and without swing and then you can see which one's better just from that little bit more extra power. These drills translate directly over to the vault and here the back of the springboard is at five feet and it can range up to five and a half depending on the gymnast with the hand mat scooched all the way up or a gap in between. Oh yes yes tumble track so we start with the same back handspring hops as well as back handspring snap throughs and this is how we usually start our tumble track practice or the start of vault or on a Saturday whenever we can get the time in. We usually do two lengths of back handspring hops, two lengths of back handspring snaps, and then continue on to whips and straight jump back handsprings with their feet in front. Tumble track's a lot like Bitcoin, you know. You stay on it long enough and you're gonna get some wild returns.
What you want to look for here is keeping the arms by the ears. They're going to swing their arms a little bit, but you want to make sure that their arms are staying by the ears and punching with their feet in front in that hollow shaping position. We then go on to do lengths of whips, feeling the arch back and feeling the hip lift while punching with our feet in front. So the great thing about having an in-ground tumble track is that I can set up four to five drills or stations that the girls can hit on their way back to their turn. Multiple back handspring hops and snaps up to different surface heights. This allows them to adjust and compensate to enter the right angle no matter what. We can train snapping through to a tuck, pike or a layout straight body position with these stations. Again here, focus that their arms are up and they're not swinging when they hit the tumble track. These back handspring snaps are so cheeky as they replicate the vault, but you can do them here on tumble track, getting so many turns in while being low impact on the body. If you haven't got a vaulting device such as a T-train or something inflatable, chuck two springboards under a cheese mat. There you go. All right, let's work those layout shapes and talk about twisting, my bread and butter. Let's get into it. In my opinion, ideally for a layout, I'd almost want a tight arch, flipping fast, rotating layout. We want to work with the power we've been generating and continuing the flip from the back handspring with the double layout. So for me, this is the best ideal to generate strength, rotation and power. The layout will come with strength and time, so just be patient and work the double layout technique. Alright, so for twisting, the majority of the time we'll start with the tuck and then gain air sense, then move to a layout when power is generated over time. Here are some supplementary drills that help with the air sense and timing for the Yuchenko. However, I try to tone down their twisting at a young age and teach them a cars so they learn the air sense and reinforce that quarter turn sit up when they're ready for the Yuchenko. Teaching a Cody would be ideal, but again, this is a long process as well as scary. So, teaching a seat drop, back tuck, layout, tuck full, layout full, translates directly to their cars, as well as their Yuchenko. Here you'll see, this gymnast does a souk full, so she twists round off to the right, but twists to the left, whereas this next gymnast maintains the same twisting direction to the right the entire time. I aim to have my gymnasts by the time they're level 8 or 9 to all have a cars off the springboard as well as potentially doing it on the vault itself. This is where the fun begins. Here you'll see the difference or maybe the sameness of the cars and the Yuchenko side by side. Well this right here just kind of hammers the nail in the coffin, eh? Like, there's not much argument after this. This shows two different skills, translating to one another, hitting that quarter position, nearly at vertical, and when you see this, you can just tell she's either going to land upright or over-rotate. Anything less than vertical, she's probably going to under-rotate or land. So watching from side on, you can really see what the outcome's going to be before they even land. If they don't hit vertical and they're more horizontal, chances are they're going to twist early and then pike down, as you see here. So if there's one takeaway that you're going to get from this, is hitting that quarter position at vertical or more. So these next two vaults show the same in the stills that you just saw. If you're more at horizontal, you're going to pike down, twist early and under rotate. If you hit that vertical, you're most likely going to be staying straight and over rotate the vault. Here again you can see two different girls warm up their layouts as well as their fulls where one twists a little early and then one hits that quarter vertical. Then we go on and over to the table and there yeah you see they're still hitting that quarter shape even in the bigger vaults with the one and a half. Hitting that quarter position that will generate that over rotation power. All right, okie dokie, hokey pokey, out of chokey. We're gonna look at catching the vault as well as spotting up on the table, catching on the ground, tucks, layouts, twisting, any vault, it's the exact same catch. For this technique, my left arm is pulling her into the table. My right arm is lifting her chest and stomach into the flip, 
my right arm will stay within her stomach, flipping around, and then my left arm will catch her upper back slash bicep. So don't push your arms up to try to catch them. Have your arms already up and try to cradle them to the ground. Here, my left arm is focusing on their chest, as well as my right arm focusing on their upper back slash bicep where I can pull them up if they're landing short. Yes, you're gonna have some fails and the girl's gonna get crazy, but that's okay. And that's where you need to get your numbers in. This is your conditioning. Get these done so then you know what to do at a meet or if something goes wrong. Every other event gets spotted religiously, whether that's glide caps, caster handstands, back handsprings, whatever it is, it gets spotted to put them through the motion in their right positions. So I spot most of these vaults, pulling them in and lifting their chest. This especially helps with their layouts and twisting timing as when they feel that lift on the chest, that's when they know when to twist. Catching the twisting vault, like I said, is the same, but it's a little bit more confusing whether they're twisting away or towards you, but you've got to get on my side, my left hand in into their chest or stomach, and then my right arm is focusing on their back or bicep, pulling them up if they're landing short. As the girls also get more proficient, you can ease up your spotting and just kind of give them a little tap, a little pat on the back, you know. And once you've got good at spotting up on top, you can really just leave it up to the girls' ability as well as air sense and drills. You can be doing one and a half, double fulls, anything like that. The world is yours. And to finish with how to get them ready for competition, at least 16 inches or 24 inches. That's what they've got to aim towards to make themselves ready, prepared and safe for competition landings. So to conclude, I want to wrap up twisting. Teach the calves off a springboard into a pit at level 6 through 8. I'll go over how to teach this specifically in another video related to souk and cars. So by the time they're level 9 and 10, they have the air sense. Supplement with seat drop back falls on trampoline and get in a bunch of spotting. You'll be surprised how quickly they pick up on the Yuchenko timing. I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope you've learned something or it's been a great refresher. Show a friend, subscribe and give that like and notification button a tickle. If you want to check out my front handspring tutorial, you can see it here.